happening. Yeah. So, look, in reality, let's rock and roll. I was talking about yesterday how our simple interest is not how we do things in reality. But in reality, compound interest compounding annually is not how we do things. Because if you owe money, you'll owe more money if it's compounding more frequently. And if you invest money, you'll make money if the same things happen. Cool? So every single day, the amount of money in your bank account gets compounded. But we deal with different sort of segments, whether it's daily, quarterly, fortnightly. So the first thing we need to do is to identify what do we have to change to deal with that sort of scenario. So I want you to think before we go into it about what needs to change. So have some thoughts about what will change. Will our interest rates stay the same? Will our number of terms stay the same? If the answer is no, how will they change? Would we expect, if we're compounding more frequently, that in the equation the interest rate will stay the same? What's going to happen to it? Well, let's start with the number of terms. So you're going to have the same number of terms. Or is there more terms? If you're compounding monthly and not annually, how many terms per year should you have? Twelve. Cool. What would we expect the rate? Will the rate stay the same or will it have to go up or will it go down? If you're increasing the number of terms, wouldn't you have to decrease the interest rate to account for that? So if you're increasing the number of terms by 12, what do you think you have to do to the number of the interest rate? Divided by 12, okay? That's an example that we're going to go through over here, but I've assumed some of this stuff in the past and it's best not to. So let's go forward with identifying how many of these are in each year. How many days are in a year? Let's start with that. 365. For those of us who like to be precise, 365 points. It's actually 0.24, but we'll leave it 365. Sweet. How do we deal with the 0.24? That deals with the 0.25. How do we do the 0.24? Does anyone know? There's one where it skips every 100 years or so. Cool. Back. Months in a year, how many months are in a year? How many weeks are in a year? How many fortnights? Pretty crazy, how many quarters? Very crazy stuff. Well, look, how many weeks are in a fortnight? How many weeks are in a fortnight? So, couldn't we get the number of weeks? Divided by two. <laughs> so, how do we adjust the different compounding terms? The best way I think is to look at an example. So we've got twelve percent compounding monthly for ten years at a thousand dollars. So is that a principal change? We're still investing. P is still equal to. $1,000. The number of terms, let's start with that. How many months are in that period of time? 120. What? 10 years. So, 10 times 12, which equals 120 months, correct? Yes. So, do I want my interest rate in per year? Do I want it, because that's my yearly interest rate. I should have put that down as PA, which means per annum. That's my yearly interest rate. So is that what I want? I want a monthly interest rate. Well, how do I get a monthly interest rate? So R equals my 12% divided by 12 divided by 100, which equals not 0, 0.0. Oh, I can do it actually this way. Sorry. Can we represent that as a decimal first? What's that as a decimal? 0 0.12. And that's my yearly interest rate, correct? So what do I have to do to make that a monthly interest rate? Divide it by? So what's that give me? 0 0.01. So A should equal 1000 times 1 plus 0 0.01 to the power of 120. So what do we do? We multiplied our number of terms by the number of months in a year, and we divided the number of the interest rate by yeah, the months in the year, correct? 
So let's get an answer for that and then we'll go through a different scenario.